grind it out for 14 hours every day um, and become the strongest man in the world. Yeah, I don't think that that's really necessarily going to happen for most of us. However, let that guy exist, the guy who does all that training and all that stuff, and then you create a game plan to win a particular game throughout the year. So pick a date, preferably one of the important dates, a big tournament where the best guy is going to be there, and you be ready to win that game that day. I feel like I can still do that. And you know what? I shouldn't say that. I used to feel like that was guaranteed. All I had to do was want to, and it needed to be worth my while, which for some reason, the monetary value of the event seems to be the front runner. But back in the day, it wasn't. There were just, uh, there were status events that you wanted to win, right? Like you want to win the WAF, um, or I'm sorry, you want to win a true national championship, right? I think we all strive to do that when we begin arm wrestling. And what I mean by a true one, we'll take a fake one. And what I mean by that is we'll take one that doesn't have the, the athletes or maybe it's in a geographical location that makes it a little more easier if you're willing to travel there, especially back when you just started and there were still two national championships. You know what I mean? You could, that was the beginning of being able to grab one that maybe you didn't deserve. But when you're 40 years old, that means that in 1995, you could have started going to these national championships. So that means for five, five years, there were true national championships. And then there was a three or four year sputter where Leonard and Denise was taken over Karen and Frank and the Thunder Bay Worlds took over the, the other world championships. And there was a four-year kind of hiatus. But then there became a 10-year run where if you just won Leonard Denise's national championship, that you were considered a true national champion. And then after that, only a few of us could ever, if you could win the WAF world championships as an American in the open class between the years of 1995 and 2020 a true world championships at your weight class in the open there's probably seven to nine of us walking in the united states that are able to do that um that is special then if you add that to could can you win this lottie is there ever a year where when you flip that book you are the champion well don't you don't have to flip it very much before you see the beast. All right. Then hey, hey, make sure you tie this back into the original question. Hardest working and best training. How we got that's what on I mean. So yeah, I, all I'm telling you is that all of those things that I was able to win, I was not necessarily ever the strongest guy in the world. However, I was capable of beating the strongest guy in the world at that tournament on that day. So when the question is, am I the best trained guy? Yes, I do feel that I have a methodology and, you know, access that can make it. Yes. You got to work hard though, if especially at my age to make it happen. So I do question whether I could do it again because I just feel older and older every day. Okay. So back in the day, what I learned was that, in all the sports, age being a factor to like keep you from being the best, arm wrestling was the one sport where you could actually age out and get stronger and better because of, are, are you, if you were capable of putting in the same work ethic and the same training as when in your 20s, uh, would your age hold you back? From achieving yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure, but don't get it twisted. I didn't work that hard when I was younger either. I was just really good. Um, but I have, you I did said, work hard. I've worked hard various times. But you, you know did I mean? say the reason you were the hardest working was not necessarily that you were the hardest working because you were, your schedule wasn't dictated by a job. You, your job is arm wrestling. And, uh, 
which and at the gym and I'm at the gym too. So that's really what that meant. Yeah. How many, man, do you know how many arm wrestlers have that kind of thing where all they can, well, all they have to do is go to the gym and they hustle enough. I don't know. I don't know how many, but I bet you there's more than you think. Back in the day, you were talking about, you you mentioned the nineties, which I don't know about the nineties, but in the two thousands, the idea of going, reaching a national title or a world title was a pretty important thing. I know you you haven't been as involved. In fact, one of the, a few commenters have stated like, Hey, Travis, he's been out of the sport. He doesn't know what's going on anymore, but yeah, that's the most interesting. It's the most interesting phrase ever. Like when I hear people tell me to come back, I am wondering what they are talking about. Like the only thing that that means is that I used to do one-on-one competitions for other leagues. And now that seems to be the measure as to whether you are competing or not. Like (laughs) Corey Miller is Corey Miller competing. You know what I mean? Like, but he is competing. Yeah. If there's, yeah, he competes. If there's a tournament that's anywhere around there or something that he, he does, he's just not right now on the WAL roster, which the people that are on the WL rosters are the ones that do not arm wrestle. I arm wrestled last weekend in Texas. That's I what mean, I said to somebody. I was like, he just arm wrestled. What I mean, are what about? are they talking about? I, I, I mean, I am always arm wrestling. Always. Every year, always. And if there is, I never let anyone have any money. So if you want to say that I'm retired, find a event that has any sort of monetary value that I am letting someone else have. Except for signing my likeness away. Except for signing my likeness away. To a league, which is not having me arm wrestle either. If I was a PAL athlete, I would not be arm wrestling right now. If I was a WL athlete, I would not be arm wrestling. Because I'm not either one of those, I'm arm wrestling all the time. I'm going to Idaho on Friday. What is more important to people today? Would you say having a wall title or having a world title or national title? Well, yeah, if you can get a, I mean, what do you mean? If you can get a wall title now, that's. No, no, like, like, okay. No, no, no. Let's say I'm new into the sport. I find, I I think you're, I I already know the answer. I already know the answer. I know the question. I know the question. Let me set it up. Let me set it up. Go ahead. I find a practice. It's a go in. It's an average of 20 guys. And now I, I've been training for six months. And, you know, at practice, people talk about things. What are your dreams? Are people talking about, man, I want a national title. I'm training for a national title. I'm training to go to the nationals. Or am I training because I want to get someone to notice me in wall and I want Neil Pickup to invite me and man, I wish I had a wall title. Like, what is the, like, cause in the two thousands, people did want national titles. They wanted the money. But they still like to have national titles minus the, the elite guys who already had success. They didn't talk about nationals as much, but when I traveled, the newer guys, the mid-level guys, the almost elite guys, they still like the national prestige, the world prestige. Is that dropped off? You tell me. Yes. First of all, there is no such thing as national championships or world championships anymore currently in the United States. Igor and Denise and Leonard have been excommunicated from the WAF, the league, the world organization that Simon Bariachoa is the president of. They have veered off to the right and they have formed another world organization the ifa you start off by saying there is no more world titles because because there's no assess nobody in the united states currently right now for the last 18 months has had any access to a national championship because of covid and because of the splitting 
of the governing bodies. There is a new WAF and there's an IAF. And it is in such turmoil right now with how many athletes are being banned because of their participation in the IAF officially have been banned. Okay, we're told we're, they were, so we're, there's all this drama going on. Okay, so wait, it, hold on. My question, walk, okay. my question, my yeah, question. I know your question. I know your no, question. No, no, it was pre-COVID. Obviously COVID kind of effed that up. And you're, you're, you're good. And you're, you're getting in the weeds. I'm already confused, which I didn't right. want to turn this episode into That's that. why, right. So your question you're is. Saying, is you're saying ahead. the unified nationals? Let's say there is no term. So yeah. t- 2019, because COVID messed up that. But like 2019, was there people That's training to go to nationals? Two, 2018 at the national, at the world championships, the split was erupted. Going into 2019, they had scheduled different events, two nationals, two worlds. COVID interrupted it and screwed it all up. So now two, we are, wait, wait, wait. because there was a split, there was now going to be two nationals in the United States again. Yes, correct. What? What? And even crazier, even crazier. Oh my God. The no world way. championships was also going to be in the United States. Pause on the worlds for a second. All right. Let's so listen, about, you asked me the, when the, the, the guy walks into practice, what is he dreaming of? What's the conversation about? Because of the national championship situation, right? Depending on what the ebb and flow of their practice is, if they are at the top elite information level, then they, the dream would be to be a WAL athlete. You, it would, it would, it would handle all of your concerns when it comes to, are you a professional athlete? Meaning you do our muscle when your boss tells you to for this much money. And you are always compensated. If you are really freaking good and you have a little bit of a problem with that contract, most of the time you have no problem with the contract. They just don't have enough spots to fill, right? That's usually the reason the Herman Stevens, the um, Daniel Mosiers, the Corey Millers, if you add it all up, we can't have everybody. So we've chosen these people. Those three people have the ability to arm wrestle elsewhere because they're good enough. Most of the time, if the WL doesn't have you and you're in the United States, it's because you personally, Dave Chafee, would rather pull in another organization after you sum up all the rules and regulations and pay, or they don't have enough room for you. Corey Miller um, and the uh, Daniel Mosier and those type of guys, right? Now, if those type of guys are good enough, they got to be real good, then they can get scooped up by the PAL, a.k.a. Dave Chafee has a reason, a home, if he's not a W athlete. Dan Mosier's about to get one, I think was supposed to get one maybe any time. Um, and um, Corey Miller hasn't yet, really not good enough for the PAL contract. He is good enough, really good enough for the WL one, though. I don't, but Corey also... And Herman Stevens, guys like those, they are a little bit bitter about some of the legalities that come along with the WL contract. So in the past, they have stated that under no circumstances would I ever. So there are some rebellious guys. To me, that rebellion also comes with the fact that you guys don't think you can win this shit either. Because if you did, you would go get that money. And if you're not, then who cares? If you don't want to play the game, there's no we can't put you in the discussion anymore. Okay, oh yeah, okay, okay. I, I get it. I get so it. So the Let, dream is 2000. Hold on. So, uh, I'm say, go ahead. 2021. Things start opening back up. Yes, the dream is to wall, but it sounds like it's harder to get in the wall. Right. Is you're telling me there's gonna be okay. I remember AAA Nationals, Unified Nationals, and USAA Nationals, which yeah. everyone knew, Leonard and Denise's Nationals. It was cool because they gave away some money, but yeah. I don't think it was looked at the quite same as the Unified. There are and now then, just two. And, that, and then AAA kind of slid down. And then when I, I loved trying to build, we were doing the Triple Crown to get you to go all three. I loved it promoted events. It promoted Unifying. 
Okay, what tune are exists now? When things open up, Simon Barrachoa and Bill Collins will be running most likely. Simon Barrachoa, most likely with Bill Collins, but maybe not because there's a little bit of drama there too. So Simon Barrachoa will be running the WAF, the true WAF World Championships, just like it's been advertised since 1999 when they took over. That's Fred Roy, that group. However, Come Igor right. Meza, you skipped right. I, Nationals first. So the that's unified, the, nat- the national championship will be the unified Nationals, and that gets you to the old. That walk, gets you to the WAF, the only which, WAF. That's it. The only now, WF. And okay, wait, wait. Will be, who broke okay. off from that? Leonard Denise and Igor Mezarenko. So now Leonard Denise started another unified. The. Uh, Igor Mezarenko started the IAF, the International Arm Wrestling Federation. They are, yeah. Leonard and Denise are, of course, all up in it, president, secretary, head referee, bullshit, just the same stuff. They're having, they had qualifiers right before the shutdown that led everybody into the world championships, the IAF world championships in Orlando. Okay, and what are the nationals for that one? IAF Nationals. So it would be the I. So you'd have the unified. And, and there's the three IAF. or four of them. There's three or four of them for the first year. Oh, That's kind of qualifiers. Yeah, it's horrid. Oh, oh it's my horrid. God. Horrid. So um, let, let's just say like an old. Pretend like this is 2010, where the Nationals are hot and the the, the Unifieds. I, I forgive me, Simon, if I get this wrong, but let's say. You had somewhere between 400 and 600 entries. And let's say 2021, if the Unifieds had 400, 600, what is the IAF new nationals getting? They're getting, they're getting good shape. They're getting good numbers because Same the, numbers. Worlds, the Worlds is in America. So you have to qualify in order to – and when you get to the Worlds, oh it's going to be just like the national championships because – no one else is coming here <laughs> because it's such a new, but don't get me wrong. I wouldn't be surprised if Igor ends up taking over and has the IAF becomes the WAF that, you know, I could be wrong and I hope not. I'm rooting for Simon only cause I, I can't stand Leonard and Denise and those, the way they do business, Igor, all of them. And we have so much past stuff. I'm rooting for Simon but I'm not sure he's going to win because a lot okay, of people, so- a lot of people, a lot of arm wrestles will go right down to Orlando, win that IAF $8 medal, wear that $6 shirt Leonard and he's give them and go right home and tell everybody in the world that they're a world champion. And I don't <laughs> blame them. I don't blame them. I would do it too. Okay, uh, 2005 Unified Nationals, you were there. John Brzezink was there. What ha- would there be anything that, that got Travis Bajan to a national championships in 2021? Do you go? Yeah. Would you go? Media, media, baby. I'll go if it helps the show. I'll go if I can get some sponsor. I'll go if Pulling John's there and they're making a movie like at that time. I'm in. Okay. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Let me tell you something. In 1999, 2000, 2001, 2002, the national championships was the funnest weekend of the year. And there was no money. It was the shit. So I loved those experiences. So as a young arm wrestler, I hope that we have those experiences. And I think now, you kind of get those experiences at the Michigan State Championships, right? At the Mississippi State Championships. These tournaments are drawing big numbers. The Keystone Championships in Pennsylvania. That's the, com- you know, when you get two, 300 pullers in the room, you know, it's just fun, man. Like, I don't yeah. know. It was, the Harley pull to me was amazing. It's just shit like that, you know. That was, we were, where was I? I was, uh, oh, I'm in Texas. To last weekend, I believe. Yeah, last weekend. Um, um, uh, or maybe the weekend before. Whatever. I think last weekend. Whatever. Um, the weekend before, because it's Monday or Tuesday now. Um, 
and I am having a Jaeger bomb with um, Eric Gerlich, um and don't mess his name up, man. He's a good dude. Fucks his name. Um, Jonathan Prita and one other guy. I can't even think of his name and Jonathan's wife. And as we're doing that, I look at them both. I'm like, listen, this, what we're doing right now is the reason you do this because the money, the fame, oh my goodness. Don't even get me started. Not even close to worth it, but hanging out with cool ass people laughing our asses off at 40 years old. Are you kidding me? It was the funnest thing that you can do. So if you're a new arm wrestler or anybody, take the stress and know that the people, the relationships, that's the only thing that you're going to take from this. The rest of it, it's going to make your stomach hurt. I mean, trying to win is an anxiety ridden fucking roller coaster, right? Meeting a, having a network of people all across the country that are your boys. I mean, I could go to, if I land anywhere near Eric Gerlich's house in Kansas, he is picking my ass up and we are going to hang out. And I firmly believe that Jonathan Frieda will be in my living room, you know, in the next year, because I met these guys. I got hung out with them more and now they're my boys for life. Exactly the same way that I met you. Can I say something? When I used to travel to all these tournaments and I, I remember the first tournament, I, you know, you're being nervous because you don't know some of the people and then you start to go in another, then you start to see familiar faces. Then you're like, Oh, you're my bro. And then you, you keep going the more and suddenly you realize, Holy shit. I'm meeting like, I'm meeting friends, like brothers, like this is really feeling like family. At my height of arm wrestling traveling, if I thought about, I had family, friends of mine would be jealous because they can't believe how many close connections I had with people like all over the place. And then you know, because of finances, obviously, you know, I had to pay the bills. I had to step away, but I'll be honest with you, dude, that I slowly, you connect on Facebook, but then you drift apart. I found myself when I was working for CrossFit, I got to travel and film and I'd make connections with one, the person I was doing a story on, but I found myself like two years ago, reminiscing and thinking about how my network is closed up and all the people that I knew is just becoming so small. And I was just like old, the old days where you just had friends in your neighborhood. And I was like, Oh my God, that I had so much friends and so many cool, special hanging out and parties. I remember one time I went to Manchester and Paul Maiden, he housed me at his house. And he, Greatest guy in the world. Dude, Paul, Paul, I showed up at Paul Maiden's house and he was like, okay, we, I can't do the accent, but he took me to this little, along the water with all these, uh, ride, all these rides, like uh, Santa Cruz boardwalk type thing. And he's like, we're bar hopping. And I was like, I don't know about that. He's like, no, no, no we do it. We go to one bar. He gives me a shot. And then we go to pissed. another one. She, getting pissed. And I was like, I was like, what's going on? He's like, no, we're doing it. We're doing it. Dude, we stopped at this little thing. We bought these dreadlocks and these hats. And by the time this thing was over, I was could not get back. We were vomiting. And I cannot believe this story that I have where I'm in Manchester, England, taking shots in this crazy, like, oh, dude, I remember it like it was yesterday, dude. So I'm traveling, you know, like this every weekend. But when I get to this location, I've got three generation of pullers. I've got the dude's granddad who beat me when I was 19 and came to the tournament. I've got the dude's dad who watched me become the best fucking arm wrestler in the world. And then I got this new guy and all he wants to talk about is schoolboy and Devin. And he doesn't even know that arm wrestle. It's amazing. Yeah. 
And, yeah. you know, it's the people are exactly what it's about. No yeah. Doubt. I guess my point of bringing that up is like, like Gabby, he's like, oh, you just came back for the money. It's like, dude, I, when I think about my time in the sport, the memories are not the money. I was, a, I made enough money to pay my bills, but the memories were of all these experiences. Like, I uh, dude, I was going through the Arnold footage and I have all the BBW parties and oh my God, it's crazy stuff. Anyways. Yes, you're right. The people, we totally got off tangent. Uh, I, I didn't mention when we were off camera for 10. Yeah, man, I feel sorry for Primal. <laughs> why, 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 why? Because the best 10 minutes of advertising in the history of the world happened at the beginning of the show and you didn't record any of it. It's going to be like, they're going to wonder why they even sent you the, pro <laughs> the beef jerky. Hold on. Be like, yo, after Hold on. what they did for Survivor, this is terrible. Hold on. No, no, I had to reset my. Yeah, we, I had this whole thing where I opened up the package. <laughs> yeah, you murdered them. Promel. I, I, what is it? Promel beef jerky sucks. <laughs> it is all Western Survivor around here. Cody Merritt, Michael Todd, Corey West, you got ass whippings coming. Taste test, CrossFit workout. So, arm wrestling. yeah, I, I'm gonna taste. I, I don't want to have it in my mouth again, so I'll taste it off camera. But Adam, uh, I went through it. I was telling you, I, I have a hard time just sucking on it. I went through all of it. I'm gonna need some more products. <laughs> but at the end of the day, how do I noticed on Neil Pickup Show that they have they're sponsored too is anyone financially sponsoring these shows <laughs> i am killing it just to let you know <laughs> is it this... bad that i'm 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 less interested in product as i'm in i need i need <laughs> <Sponsorship>. resources <laughs> i need resources yeah chris gavi is right on point with you man you all no. about the money you yeah but i want to i want because i know i know arm wrestlers need the carrot so i need money for that Okay, so let's get back on track. Are you still the? I love that I asked you if you're the smartest arm wrestler and you got really offended. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck kind of question is that? I mean, I don't, but you know, it's, it's you got to be careful telling people you're smart. You just hope that the people you talk to on a daily basis realize it. So for you to ask me that, it's crazy. Yeah. You should say, hey, I got in a big argument with this guy because I told him you were the smartest. And he had but you, to say. I mean, but you had no, it sounded like you're a little more hesitant to say it. Back then you were like, of course I'm the smartest. That. Well, I mean, now it's just proven. It's so obnoxious yeah. to ask me now. It's great. Uh, I loved, when I asked you about timing, man, it really brings me back to a time. The things that were happening, like we were the best damn sports show, the Polling John, at that time, my arm TV. The best was damn sports going. show was a was a diva moment, bro. Dude, I thought we were. Dude, they I, did a you, crazy. There's a crazy montage of me arm wrestling and talking shit on the way to being introduced to the best damn sports show live on not, the couch. Just like not, even when I watch that now, it's hot. Like hot. I helped produce that, bro. Hot boy. And man, Dude. I don't know if you know, but the shape that I was in at the Mohegan Sun was crazy in that black, like three quarter length shirt. Monster. So, if you if you go back to that tape, there was a thousand dollar sponsor on me on my back and there was five of them. Yeah. Just to show up that day. That was good. That was good shit. Because I lived locally, I, of course, was like, hey, man, you guys need footage of any of these guys? I'm the one that has it. And so they invited me down to the studio. And uh, what I noticed about that experience is the, the producers do not edit. You have, because it's union, you have an editor, and he doesn't even really make decisions. He just does what the producer says. So really, like, nowadays, I'm the producer. I'm a, we call it predator, producer, editor predator and you know i want to do this, blah, 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 blah. back then you it was illegal to do it the union states 
the <laughs> editor makes the cut, but the editor doesn't actually come up with the ideas. Yeah, well, anyways, it's like, yeah, they conversation. Invited, they invited me to like look over the shoulders as they're using the footage and they're going through all this footage and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe how much footage you have. And so I'm watching them edit and yes, the editor finally starts to chime in, but dude, they were kind of lost in how to edit arm wrestling, how to make these montages. So I was like, Hey, can I, you mind if I, you mind if I say something? They're like, yeah, what, sure. What are your thoughts? I'm like, well, if you're looking for this angle, if you fast forward three minutes, there's another cut, but, and they're like, Oh, well, this guy knows what he's doing. By the time we were halfway through the day, I was producing. The producer was just sitting there. The editor was like, holy shit, dude, thank you. You're like saving us. Bah, 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 bah. And so those little montages, specifically yours, I helped cut that shit. And they yeah. were so thankful. And they had said, we had never, never in our life had this much footage to work with on something we were cutting. It was like Christmas to them. So anyways, yeah, that awesome. was a cool experience. But that day, if you had asked me, 15 years from now, where would arm wrestling be? Oh my God, dude, all of you would have been household names. Arm TV would be as big as UFC. Bam. Sucks. Didn't happen, bro. Yeah, obviously. Oh, obviously. Oh my God. obviously. Anyways, okay. So I love that. I totally thought that the sport was exploding back then. Okay. Uh, question. Last time we left off, I had asked you, you'd visit Dave DeVoto and you said you had some stories. Yeah, I don't remember. What did, what Dave DeVoto, how, what did Dave DeVoto say about Gary Roberts? He said that you, that he gave you a shitload of money and you fucked him. We hope you like the content. Thanks for stopping by. Please leave a comment, like, share, and subscribe. Now click that little bell icon so you Damn it! Do something up. Don't ever say them two names to me.